Mridul Acharya asks me this question. Hi, Mridul. Uh, why don't you pause the video and just read his question? All right. So let me summarize. He's solving a problem in which you drop a stone from some height and you're asked to calculate what the time is. And he gets two answers, time to be plus two seconds and minus two seconds. And usually we just ignore the negative time. We say negative time doesn't make any sense. And we move on with our lives and solving more complicated problems. Middle, middle says, no, 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 I'm not happy with that. And he asks the question, and that's the goal of this video. What is the minus two second really mean? And trust me, this is a really mind blowing concept when you try to dig deeper into it. So let's spend some time on it. To begin with, Ritul has the right intuition. Okay, he says that I used to believe that here the minus two seconds mean that this is the time before I started my watch. That's perfect, Nridul. That's exactly how you should think. How you should think about it. I still believe that that that's to be true. So let me see. Let me let me try and clarify what that means. So when we are solving the problem over here. Uh, we say that the stone is dropped and therefore we'll say that the initial velocity is zero, right? But what it really means is we're saying that, hey, at t is equal to zero. Initial velocity means t is equal to zero. Initial means t is equal to zero. At t is equal to zero, we are saying the initial velocity, which we often call as u, as zero, right? So now when you say that, t is equal to zero basically means when you start your watch, okay? so. When you say, when you look at plus two seconds, the equation is basically telling you that your answer is basically telling you that two seconds later, the stone will be on the ground. But minor, what, so what does minus two seconds say? It says that two seconds ago, earlier, two seconds before you started your clock, because t is equal to zero is when you start your clock, two seconds before you started your clock, also the stone was on the ground. But why? Why is it saying that? Because two seconds ago, the stone was in probably in my hand. But actually, if you think about it, two seconds ago, I don't know where the stone was. That, that information is not given to us. Or even though it's given, probably, we are not using that information and applying it into the equation. I think that's the key to understand over here. So let's look at the equation, what equation we use. So the equation we use over here is, well, one of the kinematics equation, that is S is equal to UT plus half AT square. We know the displacement S that's given to us. We know the initial velocity, that is zero. We know the acceleration, this is free fall, so acceleration is gravitational acceleration, 9.8 or 10 meters per second square. Or is it minus 10 meters per second square? A quick thing on this, because this is to confuse me a lot. Like I used to think that, hey, if the stone is going down, I should consider positive g. If the stone is going up, I should consider negative g. It used to be like super confusing, but that's not how you do it. The way you do it is the positive and negative signs has nothing to do with whether the stone is going down or up. It has something to do with what you choose to be up positive and negative. So for example, Mridul chooses upwards to be positive. That's completely his choice, regardless of what the stone is doing. Once you have chosen upwards to be positive, then automatically all the vectors will get its sign. Now, because upwards is positive, gravity, which is downwards, becomes negative. So G becomes negative 10 meters per second square. Now you could have chosen downwards to be positive. That's completely your choice. If you had done that, G would have become plus 10 meters per second squared. It's completely your choice. Okay, now that thing is done, we could substitute over here. And over here, displacement will also be negative 20 meters because upwards is positive and here displacement is negative. And so we know all of that, so we can plug in, you can plug in and you will see what answer we'll get. We'll get that same thing. We'll get T is equal to plus or minus two seconds. But coming back to that question, why am I getting the minus two seconds? Why is it telling me two seconds ago the stone was on the ground? Now, here's the clue. I don't want to directly give the answer because it's when I thought more and more deeply about it, I, I, I fiddled with this equation. I got some really incredible insights of what I was actually doing with the equation. And I want you to get that insight as well because it's super satisfying. So here's the first thing that I did, okay? To try and understand what the, what's going on with this equation. See, um, I know that two seconds later, the stone comes to the ground. And then after that, it stops, right? It would be on the ground or somebody picks this up. But in the equation, if I put three is equal to three seconds, what will I get? Will, will the equation tell me that, hey, it's gonna stay at 20 meters and it's gonna stay there or somebody will pick it up or something else? No, what will the equation say? Well, let's see. If I put T is equal to three seconds in this equation, I will get S is equal to, this is zero plus half A is minus 10 into 
t is equal to three seconds, so I'll get three square is nine. And so I get minus 90 divided by two, I get minus 45 meters. So the equation is telling me, if I wait for three seconds, the stone will be somewhere over here, below the ground. Does it make sense? Yes, it does make sense because I, I realized that the equation doesn't know there is a ground. Equation doesn't know that. There's nowhere in the equation that I've mentioned. So the equation is assuming that it will continue to be in free fall forever, right? The equation has no bounds. When I said, when I made this statement that A is equal to minus 10, I'm basically telling my equation that my stone will be in free fall forever. And that's why even if I put T is equal to 1000 years, it will give me some, some negative displacement somewhere in the hell. <laughs> give me that and that makes sense. Now here's the thing and here's the thing now important thing that the laws of physics work the same forward in time and backwards in time. Okay, this equation doesn't differentiate between forward and backward. So when I say A is equal to minus 10, not only am I saying that my stone is in free fall forever from now, I'm also saying my stone has been in free fall since forever. And that's the clue. That's the clue to give you, to uh, make you understand why I get minus two seconds as the answer. This is the, this is the key point, I'm gonna repeat. When I'm using this equation, I'm, what I'm telling my stone, when I'm using, what I'm telling my equation is that I have a stone, it's been accelerating at, it's been in free fall since forever, since forever. It'll keep on doing that forever. That's what I'm saying, okay? And then I'm giving it one more piece of information. I'm saying, hey equation, equation, come here. Not only is this stone has been in free fall since forever, but at some point in time, it's here and its speed is zero. I'm also telling that, okay? And so now I'm asking the equa equation, if at some point in time, which is my t is equal to zero, when I start my clock, if it's here and its velocity is zero, when would it be here somewhere, 20 meters below? When would it be here somewhere? Now think about what the equation is thinking. The equation is thinking, my stone has been always in free fall, always accelerating downwards. How can it ever have zero speed? Think about it, if you're continuously accelerating, can you ever be at zero speed? Yes, you can. The only way you can is if you were decelerating before that time. Think about it, I said, uh, we are saying that the stone was in free fall. Free fall doesn't necessarily mean the speed should keep on increasing. When I throw a stone up, that's also free fall. Right? So when I tell the equation that the stone is having zero speed at some time, the equation instantly thinks and understands that before that time, the stone must have been decelerating. Only then it can ever reach that point and have zero speed. So from the equation's perspective, the stone, how can it decelerate? It can only decelerate if the stone was going up before that time, okay? And then the stone reaches zero speed and then it comes back down. So can you now understand what the equation thinks the moment you say a is equal to zero and uh, a is equal to minus 10 and u is equal to zero? From the equation's perspective, the stone has been continuously going up and decelerating since forever. It's been doing that, it'll be doing that. And then it comes minus five, minus four, minus three, minus two, minus one zero, and then plus one, plus two, plus three, plus four. That's what the equation is thinking. That's what's really happening when you substitute these values. So now, does it make sense that you're getting two answers, plus two and minus two seconds? I think it does, because now when I ask the equation, hey equation, at u, t is equal to zero, u is, here, uh, u is zero, when, is, when will be, or when was the stone 20 meters below. The equation says it will be two seconds later, but it, it also was two seconds earlier because it was decelerating, okay? So that's why you're getting two answers. And then, and so, so how, and then why do we say we should neglect it? 
because we know, we who are solving these problems know that our stone hasn't been accelerating since forever. So we intrinsically know that this equation is only valid from when you drop, so from t z from t is equal to zero, it is only valid from t is equal to zero until it's about to hit the ground. So till t is equal to two seconds. Any answer it spits out before this time and after this time, we know we shouldn't consider that because after, before that time and after that time, our stone is no longer in free fall. So this equation doesn't work anymore. And because of this, using our intelligence, we say, aha, the minus two second is, we have to discard it because we know the stone was not in free fall. And therefore we don't use it, we only use plus two seconds. In this video, we'll tackle another question. If you hover above the ground, like say Superman or helicopter, just like hovers above the ground, it, will the earth rotate beneath? And can you technically just reach the other side of the earth this way? I love these questions, keep these questions coming. See you.